back to Fresh Manna with Tiffany. I am your host, Tiffany Parr, and I have an absolute wonderful word for you today. This is a word um, for the body of Christ at large. And um, let's just start out with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I just thank you for your precious and holy word. I exalt Jesus Christ. I worship you and I praise you and I acknowledge you, Lord God, in all my ways. I pray, Lord God, that you would just anoint the, the ears of the people to hear, touch their hearts, Lord God, that they would understand, hear with spirit ears what the spirit is saying to the churches today. So God bless. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless. Hallelujah, guys. Um, so I'm back and... Um, the word today is, um, it's very, it's, wow, it's, it's amazing. It's an, it's an amazing word. Um, it's, it's regarding holy fashion. Um, I've titled this the emergence of holy fashion and Christian fashion designers. I received this, um, May 15th, um, of this year. And, um, I'm going to read this more and then just kind of jump in with some commentary here and there. Uh, but I think it would be good to read this because it kind of says everything it needs to say, like in here. So here we go. Okay, so as the days progress, men and women are gradually and swiftly departing from the norm or what has been in the, in the days past and are now entering into a season where more and more blending of genders, gender roles, even fashion design are coming into fruition. There is more of an emphasis placed on androgynous fashion, unisex, um, genderless, gender neutral, and non-binary focus, and less on the dichotomy of designs for a man and a woman. Due to this, the Christian church will look to depart from worldly standards and societal pressures to conform and look to create their own fashion houses and or small businesses where they will create garments for those looking for a distinction in gender. Though we can find male and female specific clothing now, as the church gravitates more into holiness the Lord has revealed that many will decline wearing garments created by fashion designers with this focus, with this focus on purpose in an effort to separate completely from the world and its standard. So um, Christians will plan to financially support designers who emphasize a distinction. So what I'm saying here is that um, as we go more and more into the holiness, into holiness with Christ, and there's more of the um, people who are going more into following Christ's ways all the way, like his righteousness, taking on his full righteousness, um, they're going to want to depart from the things of this world. You know, um, the word says, let him who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity depart from wickedness, you know, not to have even the appearance of evil, right? So um, the main scripture for this passage is Isaiah, or for this, for this word is Isaiah 35, 8. I have it in the New King James. The highway there shall be a road and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean will not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road although fooled, shall not go astray. Holiness, so holiness will be more of a standard of the day for the average Christian. However, it will not come off as legalistic or the previous holiness clothing in history where women wore, you know, no makeup, long dresses, no jewelry, um, you know, where they had the long um, clothes. I'll probably see if I can insert a picture. But, um, and I actually dressed like that for a while. Um, I was part of that holiness movement in my 20s, early in my 20s. I did, I was doing that for a season. Um, but anyways, um, it's not going to be this kind of holiness, that kind of holiness dress, you know. Um, it's going to be holiness defined as being set apart for God's use. He says, be ye holy for I am holy in 1 Peter 1.16. 
Holy in the Greek means dedicated or consecrated to God for his purpose, sacred. The upcoming holy fashion will first have its origin in the minds of the seed of Abraham or children of God and therefore produced with the assurance that the whole line will be holy. This fashion will be, will be stylish, creative, desirable to wear, with some designers adding their signature flair. This will be quite a feat for the body of Christ. Just in wearing holy fashion, there will be a distinction from those who love God and those who appear not to. Due to the extreme cultural influence to conform, the vast departure and, var and vast departure from previously worn clothing for men and women, those wearing these clothes will be easily defined as people of God, just as when Peter was identified by the woman and his speech betrayed him as he denied, denied Christ after his crucifixion. So remember when um, Christ said, you will deny me three times before the cock crows? So, um, and Peter was trying to warm his hands by the fire and the lady said, there's one of his disciples right there. And he said, no, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't even know Christ. Um, he said, no, you, I can tell because I can tell by the way you're talking, by the way you, your speech, you sound like one of his, his disciples. That's what's going to happen with this. People will look at the clothes and say, oh, that was made by a Christian, Christian designer. I can tell, you know, it's going to be very distinctive. Like this was made by a Christian designer. Um, okay. So, um, just recapping this, this section, um, you know, more and more clothing is going to be made for gender neutral. And if you, if you look at what's happening in Hollywood and New York and everything, you're seeing more men that are looking like women and women looking like men. Um, even sh straight people are looking more like men, like their clothes. And um, same thing, like it's just, there's just a switch because the enemy wants to cause that confusion and cause that, um, you know, he's trying to corrupt God's, you know, God's people, God's creation. That's the whole, that's the whole goal, you know, but, um, and you know, the more they can take on these things, the more, you know, demonic spirits enter because now they've opened themselves up to more things and now it takes them down this long road. And, you know, but here, but moving on. Um, so the type of fashion that we're going to see is very beautiful fashion. Beautiful is going to be originated by the mind of those seeking God. And so God is going to give them, God is going to give them um, creative and ways of designing, creative um, tools, creative ideas, you know. And um, there's a scripture that says, and I have it in here somewhere. Okay, Exodus 31, 3. This is in the New American Standard. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, in all kinds of craftsmanship. And so, um, you know, in this, God had put a spirit of craftsmanship on this um, designer back back in um back in exodus i think he was designing it designing garments for the sons of levi or the temple i think it was the sons of levi but anyways um so going back to this okay so another thing that we're going to see and um we're going to see the abandoning of the color red you know, just as the enemy has um, trying to defile and take the rainbow, um, the, red, the color red is going to be synonymous with evil. And um, before you, you know, change all your um, logos and change all your things, this is not right now. This is not happening right, right this minute. You know, it's not happening right now. You know, my calling is more of an end time prophetic calling you know god has given me things for end times and yes this is the end times but we don't know how soon these things will come to pass you know we don't know how quickly but if you're paying attention you can start to see so much satanic um videos satanic um just even the way people the way people are dressing it's black and it's it's um red 
there's always red and, and, and there's even commercials, you'll see red in the background, red. And the Lord showed me that the Christians are going to abandon the color red. They're not going to wear red anymore. They're not going to wear red um, clothes. It's going to be mainly clothes or they're not going to use the color red for things. Now, I'm not saying they're not going to wear red lipstick or something like that, but they're not going to wear red overtly, overtly. And um, I, I, I can, I know that the things that God has given me, I know that they may be controversial. I know that they may gender um, some things that people may say, well, what, where is she getting this from? Or, you know, but I'm, I'm, I would not be here saying this if I didn't know that God was showing me this like 100%. Like I have been in the prophetic since for the last 30 years. And I've had God confirm things over and over and over again. I've, I've had my senses trained to discern good and evil. I know when God is showing me something um, that is for sure. This is for sure happening. This is God for real. Now, obviously, judge it. You can. Everyone can always judge it. But you'll see. You will see. Christians will abandon the color red. Um, as darkness surrounds us even more on a daily basis, the Lord revealed there will come a day when my people will no longer wear red. He showed me that as the kingdom of darkness charges on, they will embody the color red and every evil thing will have the color red attached to it. So much so that the body of Christ will abandon wearing red just as we can no longer use God's rainbow. As holiness prevails, Many people will come out from among them. Many, many will not want anything associated with the enemy's camp. Like the scripture says, hating the clothes, clothing even stained by the flesh, it says in Jude 23. We will, be, we will come to hate the clothing associated with the enemy, evil, demonic agendas, and more. The onslaught, uh, onslaught of the devil's world will be infiltrated with red and God's kingdom will want nothing to do with it. They will also abandon any jewelry associated with the occult, any symbols known or suspected, they will abandon it. As we have been sifted, God will have his witness on in the earth. He will have people of he will have his people of distinction. The bride has prepared herself and made herself ready. So even as it says in Revelation 19, 7, it says, let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him for the marriage of the lamb, for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Okay. Now there are hosts of antichrist and occultic symbols, which are part of society, which we do not realize we're wearing. And this was the main reason for this video um, the Lord just kind of put it on my heart. Um, this is not like, you know, this is something he just laid on my heart. Okay. I'm just going to say that, um, that there's many people that are wearing occultic jewelry and symbols that they don't even realize that it's occultic or satanic. And so we're just bringing to the forefront these things, um, I'm going to put pictures on the blog, a collage of pictures, um, not naming any particular jewelry company or anything, but just the type of jewelry that people wear, like the evil eye. That's one. Um, there's the horns, the, the crescent horns. These are associated with new age. They're associated with the occult. You shouldn't be wearing those horns going, you know, in a, in a crescent shape. Um, there's so many things that the enemy, you know, the stars and with the, the star, with the, um, the, the, the crescent moon, um, there's lots of things that, that were made that are dedicated to idols, dedicated to the enemy that people of people of the enemy's camp created them with the intent of snaring the people of God. They want to snare the people of God and get them into a place where, Anything that makes them look like they're not really worshiping God or they're not really 100% for God. Any way the accuser of the brethren can go to their father and say, look, look, look at what they're doing. Look at what they're wearing. Look at what they're doing this. Look at where they're doing that. You know, he always wants to get at us. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for Jesus Christ on the cross. 
that covers us and our sins are removed from the east to the west. Praise God. Okay. Now, um, as you can also begin to see, there's things that are happening in these fashion houses and the history of these fashion that are evil. There's evil happening in these, you know, just like the whole Balenciaga scandal. That's nothing compared to the others. There's many more that are like that, that we just don't even know. We don't even know that. And I, this is not, God did not reveal this to me, but this is what I personally think is that we're going to also abandon wearing clothing with names of designer fashion designers names like the more we go into holiness you won't want to wear anything with a name associated with a worldly designer um how does that bring glory to god it doesn't bring glory to god it does not bring glory to god if you're a christian you name the name of christ but then you have a fashion designer's name on your back on your front on your this or that i mean that just, just does not bring glory to God at all. You know, now I realize that, you know, we do have things in our, in our person that, um, are well-made, well-tailored. Um, you know, we have designers that are, um, really good designers and their, their things are made with integrity. And I realize right now, that's what we're using right now. You know, and if God has not convicted you on that, you know, hey, keep, keep, keep using it. You know, um, he may, I, he may cause you to use it, but it's like when you see the name plastered all over things, you know, like sometimes you'll see the name, the tag inside, you know, you're like, oh, okay, I know that's a coach bag or whatever. The name's on the inside, but some of them, the more you find out what's, going on in their lives their their fashion houses and the history of their fashion and where their money is going to where their money is being sent to the less you're going to want to support them and the more you're going to want to support people of god people of god who come up with their own purses their own this their own that you know and so this is probably going to be a two-part you know a two-part video because this is pretty pretty long um there's a lot to this one a lot um and i haven't even gotten really to the holy fashion as much yet um but there has been um a breach against god's law in mixing patterns textures with occultic tones emanated throughout clothing and jewelry a foul spirit even if you cannot pinpoint it there should arise a check in your spirit that these things are not of god even if you do not exactly know there are several types of jewelry that hold hidden meanings hidden meanings and submit their authority to other gods even charms and graven images of other gods these are against God's word and Christians should not be found wearing any of this. Though we are not under the law, we still need to be aware of what is of God and what is not of God. The word says to avoid even the appearance of evil. Light does not mix with darkness. Though we are no longer under the law, yeah, the law, the law of the spirit is under, we are under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And he will convict us as to what is not of him and what what is not of him and what jewelry needs to be discarded. Um, take some time to cleanse your closet. You know, people have cleansed their 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 homes and tried to rid themselves of um, demonic objects and demonic books, and they've taken and they've thrown them away or they burned them or they've done whatever. Um, but how often do we sift through our jewelry? you know, and other things in our closet that are not of God, you know, that we just need to get rid of. We need to look at this and say, where does this come from? You know, um, like cowrie shells were used in divination. That's an example. Like cowrie shells, they use that for divining. Um, and so um, there's just a lot of things that we, we see that we should stay away from. We should, we should stay away from it. Um, all right. So, 
I'm going to um, hold off. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of wrap this video up. And then in the next one, we will go into um, a specific spirit that is associated with a curse. So stay tuned. And just remember, spiritual things are slippery. So grab them while you can. God bless. Bye.